Thank you to Millinote for sponsoring this video. More on that later. All right, let's hope that doesn't fall. Okay, so we are back at it again with the creativity, what did I call it? Creativity searching, creativity exploration? <laughs> I don't remember, um, but we're back at it. Today, we are at John's Pass. It's really hot in the car, so I gotta go quickly. We're at John's Pass. The goal today is just kind of vibes, touristy Florida, old Florida vibes. Um, I really, a huge goal is drawing on location. So I want to find a spot to do an actual real illustration. It doesn't have to be good. Um, I'm not used to this kind of thing, so it's not going to be great. That's fine. I brought very limited supplies, but I think that's one thing that I learned from last time is I think that will be really beneficial to do. So that's a huge goal. I want to check out the beach and mainly the boardwalk, beach and boardwalk, um, fish, ocean, bird vibes. So get some reference photos for those, but nothing major. Like I'm not going to really go into any of the shops. It's pretty busy. We're nearing spring break. So I'm not doing anything major. Um, I don't really have a specific focus. Like last time it was like fish. This is just kind of like the Florida E vibes. So it should be chill. It should be fun. I'm so hot. Uh, we're gonna get, it'll be a good time. We're gonna have a good time. So let's, let's go. <laughs> not expecting to really do but decided in the moment that it was worth it was getting photos of people obviously i wanted to ask for their permission but i like drawing people and a lot of the things that i was interested in in this location included people so i thought it was really important to get some reference photos that did include figures and, and people and obviously i wanted to make sure that was okay before i started taking pictures of random people um talking to those guys i had to get all the way in the water and i uh my shoes are soaked the bottom of my pants are soaked. It's not comfortable, but I did it for the art. You do what you gotta do. Okay, so talking in public is totally fine. So I've done a few sketches. I definitely think, obviously they're not, it's not like art. It's not colored. It's super, super basic. But I think that was actually really helpful for figuring out what I want to do. Like just being on location, I think this was definitely the way to go. And I also took notes about what's resonating with me, things that I found interesting, things that were speaking to me. I came here with the purpose of thinking that I would be over at the boardwalk and I would like find a lot of that interesting, but honestly, that is like the least interesting thing that I have found here. I talked to a few fishermen and took their pictures, which was really nice of them. And yeah, so I did a few thumbnail sketches and from there I was actually able to make notes on those thumbnails about what I found interesting and what I didn't. Also, note to myself, I took really limited supplies this time, like purposely. I took very, very few supplies, a few sketching supplies and a few inking lining supplies because I think what made me so nervous last time about drawing was I felt like I didn't know what to do with the supplies that I brought. It was too much random stuff. The color was overwhelming. And so I brought very limited supplies, didn't even worry about color, specifically brought just sketching slash lining 
And I think that really, really helped. Just being able to like put that out of my mind. It doesn't have to be pretty. Like I'm not worrying about any of that stuff. Mainly just worrying about sketching composition and line work really helped. But yeah, I'm finding so far what's, I'm thinking about like, do I want a human subject or not in this series and this, what, what do I find most interesting? I'm thinking human subjects. And I've also figured out kind of like, I'm not really, I did a sketch of the bridge and I didn't really find that interesting. Um, I like it, but it's not as interesting as I did a shot of the rocks. And I really like the way that looked. So I'm thinking I don't really like as much architecture as I do like the natural landscapes. I'm figuring out the kind of compositions I like. So I think this was actually super, super productive, even though the sketch looks pretty barren, like the, pay the spread looks really barren. I think I've actually made a lot of progress and I've also got a bunch of new ideas. Like this has sprouted so many other things that I want to explore. So super, super successful. Obviously it's not the same day, but we're gonna take a quick minute to talk about the notes that I took, like kind of debrief on the notes that I took on site. We're also gonna talk about today's sponsor, Milanote. You know, I plan on going to quite a few different locations and researching quite a few different topics. And I kind of realized I'm gonna have a lot of notes by the end of this. And who knows how long this process will take. I don't want my notes to end up being spread out between like eight different sketchbooks and three different devices. So I realized Milanote would be a great way to keep all of my thoughts and notes and photos in one place, keep them organized while I go throughout this process. And it really will be perfect because you can make like one board and then that board can have like sub boards. So there can be like one board with like all of like my overall thoughts and like keeping myself organized and on task. And then inside it, there can be like a different board for each location. It's, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Milano made this super easy to stay organized. I used a template. So they have a couple of different templates that you can start with, with different projects in mind. I started with a photo based mood board template um, because obviously like what I'm doing is very visuals heavy, but it's totally customizable. Like I can, you know, click and drag, just move these around and very easy to add elements, take away elements. They also have this toolbar over here with like everything you could need. You can click and drag anywhere on here, tables and charts. You can, you know, do web pages, arrows and lines, documents and videos. So you can sketch on top of it. It just makes it super easy to like, literally like stay very organized. If those aesthetic note takers out there, you're eating this up and I know it. <laughs> so here's my first board for this specific process. Let me take you through it. Let me talk about the notes, the things that I pulled, etc. I'll take you on a little tour. So up here, I have this little note to myself about kind of like why, what I was looking for initially, why I specifically went to this location. I think that'll just be, in, I have a terrible memory. I can see myself in like two months being like, why did I even go to John's Pass? So I wanted to give myself a note of like, what was I looking for? Then over here, I have a bunch of photos that I specifically pulled as photos that I thought could be references. Things I found particularly pretty, inspiring, compositions that I liked, etc. I took some notes on like the standout photos because like a lot of these are pretty, but they're not exactly something that I would paint. So kind of the ones that I think I would more likely paint are kind of over here. And I did take notes on like these two because they're pretty similar. So this one, I think it's great, but obviously it's not, I don't know if it's painting worthy. It feels very empty. So I said like we should have tighter composition. There's not much contrast here, but I do love the concept of two men fishing in the water, like being in the water. And then down here, I also talked about how I love this composition um, and I love seeing the fishing poles. And I also, I really was drawn to the rocks. So you can see I have pulled some colors. Here's where I was just using the pen tool because you can draw like on your board with Milanote. There was this pop of red. I love this pop of red. I loved having this like very neutral palette. I actually, I took notes on this as well. I love having the neutrals and obviously with the sky and the water, there's lots of like kind of gradients going on, but they're all neutral or cool toned or very similar small palettes. And then like in a couple of photos, like here, 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 there was like this pop of red and I really, really loved it. So over here, there are actual like color swatches because Milanote has a tool where you can literally get color swatches. It's great. And you can pick it up too. Let's get like a nice kind of more vibrant green. Very vibrant. That's so dark. Okay, let's try getting this pretty watercolor. Very cool. I just love that. I think that's a great, great tool as an artist. Every time, like color is a very prominent thought in my head. Like that's the way that I think. So that's perfect for me. So anyways, then over here we have the actual like notes and sketches that I did on site. I scanned them and I put them in here. So on top, these are three um, just kind of different angles, different views that I had while sitting on the rocks. And I like them all. I think they're all cute, but I did have notes about them. <laughs> Specifically 
Um, this bridge one I think is a really cool sketch, but I don't think I would like it as anything other than a sketch. And I was kind of thinking like, I just don't think I like the architecture. Like, I just don't think that that's an interesting part of this landscape. I really like this one. This is something that I actually draw a lot. Every time I go to any beach, I draw this exact thing, but it just felt like very empty. I did really like this one. And I really liked having the guy in it, the fisher, the fisherman, I like that. So I did note that like these compositions, very simplified versions of these compositions were things that I was really liking. I really liked the, horizon line, triangles, rule of thirds. Down here, I have two of the same view of the rocks that was kind of in the other direction. I knew I was gonna like those, <laughs> not shocked. I, I really like the rocks. And then down here, I kind of made notes, just like I did in the, in the aquarium video, I made some notes on the things that I was finding interesting, things that kept drawing my eye, kind of the takeaways of my day there. And then, cause you know, I'm on site, I'm on location, I'm feeling a little pressured. <laughs> I can't really think clearly cause I'm nervous. So doing it again at home and kind of making this board gave me a great chance to better organize my thoughts. So I have better summarized my overall takeaways here. And you can see it's a pretty color from my color palette that I pulled, very aesthetic. So my overall takeaways is that I was more into the nature elements than I was the architecture. The architecture was cool. I don't think I'm ruling out architecture as a subject. I just think in this scenario, that's not what I was finding interesting. I also love the simple color palette, but with lots of elements to make up for the simplicity of the composition and the color palettes. I like there being lots of texture and elements. So things like the rocks, which there's a lot going on there. It's kind of eclectic and very detailed. I also am thinking that I like the idea of a human, like a figure being in the painting, even if they're small. Might not be the subject or the, even the focal point, but I do think that that adds something. Like I really like drawing people. I think that would be important to me. And then I also, you can see these arrows helping me, my, my thought process, show you what the flow is. I also figured out some next places or topics that I would like to research. So there's Tarpon Springs, which is a local sponge dock, um, very Greek area near me. Um, going to a main street, just looking for kind of those, John's Pass is very like retro, like kind of retro-y Florida, kind of old fashioned tourist Florida. I love to look for more of those vibes, even though like that's not really what I was finding interesting in John's Pass. I think I could find it a little bit more strongly somewhere else and that, that might be more interesting to me. Boats, I like boats. Possibly sharks and dolphins, specifically because I keep seeing like dolphin tours and shark boats and I think they're funny. And I do like, I do love sharks. So that might be cool to look into. Um, I'm also thinking there is a, a beach where I went and I like didn't care about the beach, <laughs> but I think it might be fun to specifically go to a beach. And it's just hard with like getting people's permission to like, you know, um, I, I think I would like to look into like our traditional be tourist beach concept, something that I'd like to represent. Probably not, but I think it's worth exploring. And then finally, birds. I love birds, specifically Florida birds. I saw a few while I was there. There's lots of birds sitting around. <laughs> um, so I was really into that. What's also really cool is they have a web clipper extension. So like I've got this tab up for Florida birds, okay? Because I just talked about Florida birds. So there's all these great charts here, okay? Of like different Florida birds. See how this little save pops up? I just click save, okay? <laughs> And then I click where I want it to go, which board I want to send it to. Then I go back to my board. Boom, it's right there waiting for me. And I just click and drag it over. It's as easy as that. How crazy is that? When you're doing lots of research or trying to organize lots of stuff from like different resources around the web, that's really great. I use Milanote pretty regularly for the graphic novel that I'm illustrating and all of the main characters, not all of them, but most of the main characters are based on old Hollywood actors and actresses. So I've had to go out on the web and like find all sorts of photo references of them. It's really easy to just click save, 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 then go back to the board and organize them from there. You can also use Milanote collaboratively. So say you're trying to pitch something to someone or you're working with team members, you can invite other people to work on the board with you. Or when you're done, you can invite clients or team members to comment on it, review it, etc. As a creative, as an artist, I think very visually and my thoughts can get really cluttered and scattered. This is a great way to keep them organized and also like, again, visual heavy. I can like see the things that I'm thinking about. I'm really excited to continue using it for the other creativity explorations I go on. I think it's gonna be so fun to use, just very aesthetic looking, which is such a slay. I really can't recommend it enough if you wanna stay organized in whatever way for whatever you're working on, especially if you are a creative or a freelancer. I think it's just really, really useful. If you would like to stay organized or you just wanna use it for fun, cause honestly, it's very fun. You can sign up to Milanote for free using the link in the description down below. Thank you so much to Milanote for sponsoring. Thank you for checking out Milanote. And yeah, that's it. Those, that's my board. <laughs> those are my notes. Those are the doodles. Those are my thoughts. 
from John's pass. Slay. By the time I got home, I decided I definitely wanted to draw or paint some of the photos I had taken. I felt like I had raised a few questions in my on-site note-taking and drawing process that would be best answered by doing some tests, so I did basically some painting sketches. I picked a few photos that I really liked and could see possibly making an actual painting out of and narrow them down to two to do in my sketchbook. I started painting and immediately I was like, you know, these are gonna suck. These are gonna be bad. I could just feel that they were gonna turn out ugly. I feel like I'm really bad at this simplified realism style that I always try to go for, specifically when it comes to scenery landscapes. Like I'm just not good at it. But I actually ended up loving how both of these paintings turned out. So it worked out. This field trip definitely felt like an extension of the aquarium, like a next step, but it also felt very different. I think I got way less like aesthetic footage because obviously, you know, this was just me like in a place. Don't get me wrong, it was beautiful and filled with inspiration, but it wasn't quite as visually stimulating as a bunch of beautiful fish swimming around and, and colors and stuff. It definitely sparked some other ideas, which I was really, really excited about. That's definitely like the, the hope with each location that I go to. I'm really banking on each, and location is also not the right word, like anything that I do, because some things that I explore might not be a location. I'm really banking on each thing I do kind of leading to a laundry list of other things and subjects I can explore, and that way it'll kind of grow exponentially, which will obviously increase my odds of me stumbling across something that I can, I can use, you know? I definitely learned a lot on this trip, what to look for in the future, and you know, just what, what can I do better or differently next time I go out. For example, I learned that the crowds of people and lines of buildings weren't nearly as artistically interesting as I had thought they would be. I didn't really see any architecture there that I was interested in, which makes me wonder if I want to do any architecture at all. I thought I was interested in it, but after to, you know this trip, I was like, mm, I don't know. So that's something that I need to look out for on future trips, see if there's any sort of architecture that catches my eye. I think I definitely learned that I like the ocean and people and figures, as well as compositions that I really like, I was able to kind of fi figure out. I learned that drawing on location and not just taking notes is super helpful and vital to the process. Maybe not every time, I'm sure there will be occasions that that won't really apply or be feasible, but I think locations like this, it definitely made a difference. I think my notes were much more helpful and in depth. I also put myself out there and I asked some people for photos, which ended up being very useful. So I definitely want to continue doing that and maybe even try to take it further when I can. Now, I also want to talk about last episode and some of the feedback I got. First of all, thank you guys so much for your wonderful feedback. I got so many comments. It was so cool to see how much you guys connected with the video. It just made me feel really good, like really, really good. So thank you so much. But I also got a lot of feedback and advice that I, I don't know, it kind of seemed maybe like um, confused. Like maybe I had never properly articulated what I meant to say. And this is something that I want to address early on in this process, because if you don't know this about me, I'm really bad at taking unsolicited advice and I can see it kind of bothering me throughout this process. And this process is very, very important to me. So I just want to address it well, like right now. Not that I don't want any advice at all. There were a lot of great um, ideas. There was a lot of encouragement in the comments and I'm grateful to everyone. Like no matter what you commented, I only got positive comments. Um, and thank you so much for that. I know everyone was being sweet and had good intentions and I, I appreciate that so much. But like I said, I feel like I might have been a little unclear with my goals with this whole process and I wanna clear that up to avoid specific comments in the future that tend to bug me. <laughs> That's my bad. So while I hope to learn a lot, like in general about this process and get better at being creative and original, there is an ultimate goal here. Like this is step one of step one, but this is an, there is an ultimate goal at the end of this. I wanna create some sort of cohesive body of work to do something with. It's a very vague goal, I know. Uh, I don't know what I want that body of work to consist of or mean or anything. And I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. I'm thinking something along the lines of gallery, you know? But I want some tangible body of work that ties together somehow, um, whether it's, you know, a meaning or a lesson or a theme, just something. And I want to use it to break into the traditional art world in real life, however that may be. And I've learned through experience that the traditional art world is <laughs> very, very pretentious. And for them to take you seriously, you usually need some sort of message or moral or meaning in your art. And so doing this research, like I said, in general, I'm, I'm hoping to build some skills that I feel that I lack. But the end game of this step one is to find something that I find interesting and provocative to me. <laughs> enough to create a whole series of art about. 
or maybe you know I'll go through this process and create a series of art about you know all of these subjects mesh mesh together. I don't know, um, but that's the purpose here. So everything I'm doing, all this stuff is is stuff that I have identified as something that I want to do. It's for me. It's something that I want to take seriously. I personally don't believe that anyone's art has to have any sort of meaning or message or anything at all to be good or to have value. I don't think that. Um, however, it's something that I want to explore. I also fully know and acknowledge that nothing is original in art. You know, nothing will be made for the first time. However, that doesn't mean that I have to always rely on a photo or someone else's idea. I can still build that skill for myself. I have not found the thing that I want to purposely paint about yet. And when I think I've got an idea or that I figured it out, I will definitely let you guys know that will be a part of this process that I document, but I really truly want to come up with it organically on my own. Like that's, that's a huge part of this for me. I'm, I'm really trying to learn. I mean, I've, I've been doing that in a couple of series on my channel, a couple of ways. Um, I'm really hoping to work on thinking for myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? I grew up drawing from reference. It's how I've done it my whole life. And it's still a habit that I'm trying to break. Not that I am leaving references forever. They are valuable. So I'm respectfully asking commenters to just don't, you know, point me in any specific direction of like what I should do with the subject or if this is the subject. I got, I got a few comments about that telling me like, okay, you like fish, do this with fish. Again, great ideas, like I have great thought behind it, but you know, it's something, this is something that I wanna do on, on my own. That's part of this process. You know, some of this is just me learning to trust myself as an artist more, hone my artistic gut and instincts. And sometimes I may not do what you expect me to do or what, you know, uh, it might not make sense to you. I'm not a great traditional artist, like as in um, like the traditional process, I am pretty self-taught in a lot of ways. And so I think I do a lot of things wrong, but that's okay. You know, I'm doing it my way. I also want to say if anything I am doing or researching is interesting to you, if it gives you an idea, please jump on that. I, I want to share this inspiration. I want to share this journey with you guys. So much of the feedback I got is people kind of struggling in similar ways. Great to know that I'm not alone. So if, if anything I do like gives you an idea, like please, please pursue that in any way. Again, to be clear, I'm not saying that I don't want advice at all because I got so much good advice. Um, so many things that I could try next time or experiment with. Um, and then I really appreciate that. I've, I've received some great ideas. I just specifically don't want to be told like what to draw or what to do with photos that I take because like this is a process that I that I really want to figure out for myself so I can take what I learn into uh, future things. And I've always just been someone who learned by doing. I've never really had a teacher to specifically tell me what to do. And so I don't know what to do when that, ha like I don't like learning that way. I like learning on my own. Um, and so I just, I just wanted to get all this cleared, clear the air before I get really deep into this process. And it's something that bugs me because I think this is gonna be really valuable to me um, and really, really helpful. And hopefully I unearth something along the way. So I just wanted I just wanted to say that, but I do also want to say thank you for your advice and thank you guys for just the wonderful, wonderful comments that I received. So many comments. You guys are amazing.